Hey, welcome back. In this video on how to use the Qt Game Engine, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a basic entity and place them inside your map. An entity is the foundational class in the Qt Game Engine. They have a graphical representation called a sprite. We're going to teach you how to create an entity with a sprite and place them in a map. So once again, let's turn off the camera, turn on the screen recorder and dive straight into the code. Hello, so this is the code that we made during the previous tutorial. It basically shows a blank map. Uh, so let's go ahead and get an entity into this map. We will go ahead and create the entity. So first of all, we need to include the header for it. It's prepended by the QGE folder, just like all the other headers. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm just going to make a little comment here that this is new code. All the code above this line, basically we did in a previous tutorial. So we're going to create an entity. Uh, we create it just like we create anything else. Okay. Uh, now we're going to get the graphical representation of this entity from a sprite sheet. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a sprite sheet is, real quick, I'll go through it. Basically, it's an image like this where you have uh, all the frames of a 2D animation. So, for example, this is the frame 1 of the die animation, frame 2, frame 3, frame 4, etc. This is the hurt animation, this is the attack animation, etc. It's basically all the, an uh, all the frames of the various animations of a character or whatever. So that's a sprite sheet. Um, now we're going to uh, extract... Uh, the graphical representation for this entity from a sprite sheet. To do that, we're going to create a class called a sprite sheet, uh, very aptly named. So we're going to create an instance of that class because that's what will allow us to extract these frames. So we will, I'm going to just write it, we're going to um, use a sprite sheet to extract frames from, a, from an actual sprite sheet. Alrighty, I'm going to scroll down so you can see here. <clears throat> um, well, let me scroll. Let me just put a couple of spaces here so that I can scroll a little. Yep. That's good. So I'm going to create a sprite sheet. Oh, we got to include it first. So we'll jump up here and we'll include the header. We'll go back to where we were. Uh, and if you're having trouble following me on this document, I'm sorry. Um, I have to zoom in pretty closely so that you guys would be able to read the text. I'm just using the cute navigation to uh, jump around, okay? Nothing, nothing too fancy. So we'll, we're going to call this a Minotaur Sprite Sheet because uh, it's going to be a Minotaur. Okay, so we need to tell it where the path to the file is uh, and, and a few other pieces of information. I'll go through them one at a time. So the path to the file that has your frames, right? I have, um, I have some frames in a particular file and uh, I'm just going to copy and paste that path over so I don't have to type it and I might make, make a mistake. So there it is. Um, I hope you can see that on the camera. Okay. So inside my resource folder, and I hope you guys know about uh, Qt's resource system. If you don't, that, that is covered in one of my previous tutorials that I made years back. But anyways, this is just the path to this picture over here. Um, I, you can see a part of that when I mouse over it. Okay, so w now we have to specify how many tiles it are in the x direction and in the y direction in the sprite sheet. So there's, I know that there's 24 in the X direction and there's eight in the Y direction in this particular sprite sheet. So I tell the class that. And then the width and height of each of the frames. These are 128 by 128. There we go. And PS, for all these tutorials, there's a text version. Uh, 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 in, uh, actually, uh, an example uh, an example project um, with a lot of comments explaining everything so 
if you want to see all of this in the text version, I would recommend you go look at the example projects that I ship with the game engine. All right, so back to this. We've created our sprite sheet that will allow us to quickly extract frames from uh, our image up there. So <clears throat> now we're going to actually create a sprite. So we're going to create what's called an angled sprite. Let's go ahead and include the header file for it. So we also have a top-down sprite for when the graphics are from a purely top-down view. But as you can see, these are from angled. So I need to create an angled sprite. Alrighty. Now we will basically, uh, here we will extract from the sprite sheet to the sprite. And the code for this is a, a bit uh, much. It's a bit of a boilerplate code if you guys have heard that term before. Um, I need to automate this in the future via a GUI or somehow. So for now, instead of typing all of that out and making you guys watch, I'm going to copy and paste it, and then I will explain it. I'm basically copying and pasting this from the example project that I ship with the game engine. So you can look at it there. So here it is. OK, I may have to modify this a little bit so that it fits better within um, my window here. But <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so we're going to loop from uh, basically 1 to 8. Uh, basically, we're going to loop for each angle. There's 8 angles that this particular image has. Uh, see? I hope you guys can see that, but there's 8 different angles that we're viewing this particular uh, character from. So for each angle, I'm going to extract all the frames. Okay? So that's what the loop up here does. So now we... Uh, we call the add frame method of the angled sprite and uh, we tell it basically the angle of the entity uh, in these frames so we tell it that we're gonna add frames for this angle like 30 degrees 45 degrees and as you can see we're multiplying that by I so that we get all the different angles if you don't understand this part it really doesn't matter too much but here we're basically saying okay entity sprite which represents the actual graphical representation of the entity, I want to add some frames to that from the Minotaur sprite sheet. This is going to be for the stand animation. We name each of our animations. It's going to be from the position, this position to this position in the sprite sheet. Uh, and that's it. So it, you can uh, play around with this. I think that's the best way to get how this function works. But here we're basically extracting frames from the sprite sheet into the entity sprite and we have to name that animation we're naming it stand right okay now uh, here you can completely ignore this I just have to add the last two frames in reverse order just to make the animation a little bit smoother it's really not important this one uh, now here we extracted the stand animation for this angle now we're gonna get the walk animation for the same angle and we're going to get the attack animation for the same angle. Nothing changes here. Um, I can scroll a little bit so you can see that, but as you can see, we call the add frames, the angle, the name of the animation, the sprite sheet that we want to extract from, and the location in the sprite sheet. So from this location to this location. A node is basically a discrete XY location. That's all. Okay. So that basically we extracted frames from our sprite sheet into our angled sprite. <clears throat> now we're going to go ahead and uh, we have to assign this uh, sprite uh, to the entity. So to assign our angled sprite, we simply do um, entity sprite. Uh, we simply set the sprite property. It's pretty simple. So we will do entity set sprite and we will set the sprite to um, entity sprite I believe that's what we called it okay and right before we do that actually we're gonna set the origin uh, of the entity basically the origin is the location in the uh, graphic 
that is the point about which the entity rotates and moves. So we want it to move relative to position 64, 64 of the graphic. And we want it to rotate relative to that position as well. Okay, um, now we're actually going to set a position for the entity and then add it to the map. So we're going to go ahead and put them at position 300, 300. Um, and we will use the maps add entity method to actually add the entity to the map. Okay. So now we're actually going to play one of the animations of the sprite of the entity. So we're going to get the sprite and then we're going to call the play method of the sprite to play an animation. So we tell it the name of the animation. Uh, I want to play the stand animation. Remember we named our animations as we were extracting them from the sprite sheet to the sprite. I want to, the number of times that I want to play this is negative one. Negative one basically means an infinite number of times. You could also put one, two, three if you actually want to play it a finite number of times. Uh, the frame per second that we want to play this, I'll just go ahead with 10, 10 frames per second. And the frame that we want to start playing is frame zero, so the very first frame. Okay, and uh, did we launch our game already? Yes, we did. So there we go, that's it. So to quickly recap before I show you, um, is we created an entity. An entity is the foundational class. Anything that can go in a map is an entity. Entities have a graphical representation called sprites. There are two types of sprites. Angled sprites, when the graphical representation is from multiple angles. And we also have another one called, I'll just write it down here, top-down sprite, for when, when there's just a top-down view of the entity. So we created a sprite for our entity. We used a little helper class called Sprite Sheet to extract frames from an actual image that has all of our frames. And then uh, we, uh, we basically uh, set the sprite of the entity. We set a position for the entity and we added him to the map. Let's go ahead and launch this and see what it looks like. I hope it works. Uh, that was a lot of code. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we have some errors, but if we do, we'll take care of it. Ooh, it does work, no errors. That's pretty cool. So there we go. Um, you, you see he's kind of like breathing. So the animation is playing successfully. This is the stand animation. Now I will admit that uh, when we were extracting, uh, basically let me move this over a little bit. I'll leave it there so you can still kind of see him. Okay, when we were extracting frames from the sprite sheet into the sprite, um, there's actually a lot of boilerplate code and this isn't as smooth as I would want it to be. I will work on making that more, I will streamline that as much as I can. Maybe I'll make a GUI application that lets you do it, uh, you know, via clicking and dragging or whatever. But we will, for the future tutorials, we will encapsulate all of this in a function so you don't have to do it again and again and again. I highly recommend that you play around with this example. Again, each of these tutorials has an accompanying, uh, accompanying example where you can actually load up the uh, project in your Qt Creator IDE and run it and mess around with it. So I really recommend that you mess around with this example so that you can really learn how this API works. Um, and I promise that in the future tutorials we won't have as much boilerplate code. This is about the only place um, in the game engine that I kind of can streamline a little bit more. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.